Okay, well, you've already looked at uh, trigonometry from a graphical point of view in Chapter 5. You looked at the graph of sine, cosine, and tangent, and all the others. And then in Chapter 6, you looked at the geometric aspects of trig. You looked at right triangle trig and how to compute uh, trig values on it, um, of any angle. In this chapter, we're going to look at the analytical or algebraic aspects of trig. And uh, it's important that you understand or that you memorize these basic trig identities first. First of all, an identity is just an equation that's true for all x for which the equation is defined. It's always true. And these first ones, these basic reciprocal ide identities, follow from the fact, uh, uh, follow from the definition of unit circle trig, right? If the sine was the y coordinate, then the, the cosecant was 1 over the y coordinate, and so on. The Pythagorean one's um, very useful, especially this first one. This first one comes up all the time. Uh, this, this, this just says that the point lies on the unit circle. Remember how we got this in chapter 5? Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And if you divide both sides by cosine squared, I believe, you get this one. And if you, if you go back here and divide both sides by sine squared, you get this one. So you can always derive these first, these second and third ones from the first one. Even in odd identities, there I would suggest you keep those straight by looking at the graphs of the sine and cosine function. Sine is an odd function, so the graph looks like this. So that means that the sine of negative x is equal to the sine equals negative sine of x. Cosine is an even function, so cosine negative x equals the cosine of x, because the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Tangent is also an odd function, so the tangent of negative x is negative the tangent of x. So again, if you look at it in terms of the um, graphs, I think that helps you keep that straight. Now these co-function identities, uh, a good way to keep those straight is, is to think about it in terms of a right triangle. What, what, what these say, for example, the first one, the sine of the complement of an angle is the cosine of the angle itself. Now, what does a complement mean? Complement, two angles are complementary if they add up to 90 degrees or pi over 2. So basically all they say is, for example, the sine of this angle theta is the cosine of the complement of theta. See that? The tangent of this angle theta is the cotangent of the complement of theta. So for example, let's look at the second one here. It says the cosine of the complement of theta is equal to the sine of theta. Okay, well what is the sine of theta? Sine of theta would be b over c, right? Okay, what is the cosine of the complement of theta? It would still be b over c. So that's all it says. If you understand that, it, is, it helps you keep it straight. Alright, anyway, what is an identity? An identity is an equation that's true for all x. So, um, you could use your graphing calculator to determine if an equation is, is an identity. I think you know pretty much this is not an identity. You know what the graph of sine of 2x looks like. It doesn't that have a period change. Doesn't the period become pi, I believe? And you know the, the graph of 2 sine x that has an amplitude change. So changing the, shrinking the period does, does not give you the same thing as, as doubling the amplitude, does it? But anyway, what you could do, you could use your graphing calculator and you could enter these two functions and then what you could do is um, take a look at the graph. Let's graph these. Uh, let's graph a uh, zoom trig on this one. Notice uh, w as I graph simultaneously, they're giving me different graphs. So if they were identities, they have to be true for all x. So if I ask you a question, well, tell me an x value for which they're not true. Well, one of them would be um, pi over 2, right? Uh, at pi over 2, isn't, isn't the first one equal to 0 and the second one equal to 2, right? At pi over 2, the um, sine 2x would be 0 and 2 sine x would be 2. Anyway, so you should be able to do that too. So, is this, is this, is this an, an identity? Uh, cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Let's see, let's, let's enter the graph on our calculator and see. Okay, so you enter it like this, right? You go two parentheses cosine x squared minus one. This is cosine two x. So if we graph this, let's just see what the graph looks like here. Let's go zoom uh, trig again. Zoom trig again. Here, notice when you graph this simultaneously, you're getting one graph. So that means they're they're the same. So this is an identity because the both the graphs are the same. Yes. Much of what we're going to do this section is prove that um, equations are identities. But before we do that, let's look at some practice problems. Here you want to express this in terms of sine and cosine and simplify using some of our basic identities. So the secant is just 1 over cosine, right? So you could replace secant with 1 over cosine, and then if you get the common denominator, 
think algebraically in the numerator, you get this, 1 minus cosine squared over cosine. The bottom just becomes sine over cosine. So when you flip that over and cancel one of your uh, cancel your sine and one of your in your cosine, you get the answer is it reduces to sine theta. All right, let's do another one. Simplify this. Well, you, what you could do is be like everybody else and um, write everything in terms of sines and cosines. That's a great way to approach it. But you're not going to impress your friends at the math party this weekend if you do that as much. Try something fancy. Let's really impress them. Let's replace. Um, doesn't tan squared plus one equal secant squared? Isn't that one of our one of our identities? So I'm going to break up two and call it one plus one, and then I'm going to replace one plus tan squared, and I'm going to replace this whole thing as a secant squared. Okay? Why is that helpful? Because then if you break this up into two fractions, you get one over secant squared plus one. The ones cancel. You get one over secant squared, which is cosine squared. Interesting, huh? Impressive. Anyway. Um, so what you're going to do is verify that these are identities and um, what you generally do is you start on one side and get the other. Now which side do you start on? Well, I would start on the messier side. I'm going to start on the left left side. And also, what's nice about these is you know what the answer is. You know that you're trying to make the left side equal to this. Well, if you just multiply the left side out, you get this and then use the Pythagorean identity. Look, look for sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Use that all the time. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and that's exactly what the right side is. So, so why would you start on here? I'd probably start on the left side. I'm gonna just use, I'm probably gonna write in terms of sines and cosines, okay? Break down cotangent as cosine over sine, secant is one over sine. When you multi, and then I get a common denominator, you get this. Then, uh, when you multiply the top out, what is cosine x minus 1 times cosine x plus 1? Isn't that a conjugate idea? Isn't that the difference of two squares? You get cosine squared of x minus 1. Now, you're trying to make it equal to sine of x, negative sine of x, right? Cosine squared x minus 1 is not uh, the Pythagorean identity. You want 1 minus cosine squared, which equals sine squared. So if you factor a negative 1 out of the numerator, you could then replace 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. And then the signs cancel and you have negative sine x. That's how that works. All right, let's try another one. So that Pythagorean identity comes up a lot. Here's one that's kind of tricky because it's not clear what, what side we should start on. I'm going to start on the right side this time. And this, is, this, is, this comes up a lot too, this idea of a conjugate. Well, if you multiply, say, 1 plus cosine times 1 minus cosine, uh, you're going to get 1 minus cosine squared which is just the Pythagorean identity again. So look for that. Look for 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared and also 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. Look, look for those variations. Let's, let's, just, let's just try that. So on, on the right side then, you get this. On the bottom you get 1 minus cosine squared, which is the same as sine squared I mentioned. Now what am I trying to make it equal to? I'm trying to make it equal to this. So you have this, you just want to cancel a sine with one of the signs. And sure enough, it, it reduces down and you get you get uh, the left side, 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. This, this is a good problem because you might not, you might not know how, how to proceed here. I'm going to start on the left side, write it in terms of sines and cosines, and then I'm going to get the common denominator like I would if it were an, any other algebra problem. So I'm kind of stuck here. So what, what, what you might want to do sometimes is work backwards, okay? This is like your scratch paper over here. The right side is equal to um, uh, tan squared sine squared, so you get sine squared over cosine squared times sine squared, and that's just the same thing as sine to the fourth over cosine squared. So if I can make this left side equal to sine to the fourth over cosine squared, I got it. So what should I do? Well, I can factor a sine squared out right at the top, and look, there's that one minus cosine squared again. I'm going to call that sine squared. So I do have sine squared, or sine to the fourth over cosine to the fourth, so now I know how to finish it. I know how to finish I'm going to break it up into two um, two pieces. It's sine squared over cosine squared times sine squared. This first one becomes a tan squared. The second one becomes a, still a sine squared. You, you get, get tan, tan squared, squared times sine squared, which is the right hand side. Yeah, there's there, there's no real tricks to these. You just gotta practice. You gotta practice them. And, and uh, you know, if you get stuck, try working backwards. Okay, and look, look for two things. Look for the Pythagorean identity, that cosine squared plus sine squared is one, or that cosine squared is one minus sine squared and sine squared is one minus cosine squared. The other thing to look for is look for that idea of the conjugate, because that comes up a lot too. Good luck and don't give up. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.